Uh, this morning, I wasn't sure exactly how long it would take for the baby dedication, so I don't have a long message this morning, but I have an important one. We have been examining the book of Acts and seeing who the early church was. Who was the ecclesia, right? It's the church. The church is the ecclesia. So what are we called to as the church today? As believers today, what are we called to? So last week, we took, to, we took a look at the testimony of Saul. How many remember that? How many, how many know the account of Saul? Pretty aware, the road to Damascus, right? This man was educated and important, and he was persecuting the early church. He, uh, he approved the murder of Stephen and was wreaking havoc on believers. And the question posed was, how could a man like this be saved? How could a man like this come to know the Lord? But we saw together that Jesus stepped into his situation and made himself real before him, right? Remember, this was his Mack truck experience with God. So if you weren't here last week, let me catch you up. If you were to go out onto the highway, Highway 71, and step in front of an oncoming Mack truck, should you survive, your life is going to be changed, right? Right? Who you were before the Mack truck and after are totally different people. You're going to walk different. You're going to talk different, right? You're going to, in some ways, even look different. People are going to notice a difference in you. When Saul encounters Jesus on the road to Damascus, he left different. He left different. He left changed. He left that experience talking differently. In fact, he took a few days to heal in the house of Ananias, and when he left, he immediately went about preaching the truth of Jesus Christ. I said this last week, but some weren't here, and so it's worth saying again. When you encounter the Christ, when you encounter Jesus, when you make a true decision for Jesus, when you go from death to life, when you are changed from being marked a sinner to being marked righteous by the blood of Jesus Christ, when that happens, there should be a difference in your life. Amen? You won't walk the same. You won't talk the same. When you encounter Jesus. When people encounter Jesus and they respond accordingly, they will be changed. Amen? Amen. It's also worth reminding you of Romans chapter 14 this morning. It says this in verse 10 through 11. It says, For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God, for it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. What that means is you can do it now or you can do it later. But how many know it's better to do it now? Right? You can do it now or you can do it later, but eventually your knee will bow before the King of kings and the Lord of lords. The truth is this, I happily and willingly bow my knee, my life, before the King of Kings, before the Lord of Lords, knowing that my righteousness is like filthy rags before a holy God, and that my only hope is in him, amen? How many know that's a good message, right? But that's not today's message. That was last week's message. So now we get into today's message. This week, I want to simply remind you of what is so important and vital to the church, not just now, but in the early days. In short, I want to take a look at what we've seen over the last few weeks. So this is much of uh, what we call, we're going to recover some things. Because nobody, listen, nobody wants to be here until 4 o'clock, right? Oh, you do? Oh, I'm so used to responses that... Listen, if you're new here, you can say amen. Amen? If you're new here, we like to get a little rowdy in church sometimes, right? Bobby, you know what I'm talking about? Bobby, you respond with a, with a yell sometimes. Hallelujah. Listen, uh, we're not going to be here for, forever, but if you want to, you can go back on, on YouTube. You can watch the messages. It's fantastic. Throughout our study, we have seen people who were led by the Spirit of God, the early church what we call the Ecclesia. They encountered Jesus after the resurrection. They spent 40 days with him receiving instruction. 
And remember that this was the account that was given by Luke in Acts chapter 1, 1 through 3. He wrote this uh, letter to a man named Theophilus. And he says this, it says, In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up, after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them. Not a dead man, right? We don't worship a dead man this morning, amen? Amen, come on. We don't worship a dead man. We worship one who is alive and well. He appeared to them during 40 days and nights, or 40 days in speaking about the kingdom of God. And then he left them with the good news of the helper, amen? The Holy Spirit, what we would call the promise of the Father. And now the Holy Spirit will guide them. They won't be led by their emotions. They won't be led by their feelings. But being so connected to the presence of God, they heard and obeyed. They were filled with the Spirit. Amen? Amen. Come on. This is a Pentecostal church this morning, right? Come on. There's a lot of visitors here. So if I say this is a Lutheran church or a Baptist church or any other kind of church, somebody might get mad. I don't care. This is a Pentecostal church this morning. Amen? Come on. <laughs> just having fun, you guys. Don't everybody walk away at once. Just like the early church was filled, how many know we need to be filled? We need to be filled with the presence of God. Acts 2, 1 through 4 says this. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. Verse 4 says, And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. This was the promise of the Father. The Holy Spirit, the Advocate, the Helper, the Paraclete, the Reminder. That is, the Holy Spirit has now filled the early believers, and in the account, they speak in languages unknown to them naturally. And I know what some people are thinking right now. You think, Pastor David, you're going to preach on tongues right now? No, I'm not going to preach on tongues right now. Remember, tongues is a gift. It's not the gift. Amen? Remember, tongues isn't the point. Jesus is the point. Amen? Amen. So there's this work of the Holy Spirit in salvation. It brings about the spiritual regeneration that we have. And then we see a secondary work, a baptism in the Holy Spirit, in which we aren't just filled one time, and that's good enough. Well, you know, in 1987, I was filled with the Spirit. That's great. How about today? We're not just filled one time, and it's good enough, but we want to be continually filled with his presence, continually filled for the work of bringing people to Jesus. That's what we are filled for. The work of bringing people to Jesus, and that's an important aspect of the early church that we cannot miss in the modern church. We are not called to bring glory to the Holy Spirit, but to Jesus. And the the truth is this, when we are more concerned about the newest sign, the newest wonder, the newest miracle, that when we're more concerned about those things than than we are about leading people to Jesus, we have missed the mark. If we are more concerned about signs and wonders than leading people to Jesus, we have gone out of bounds. We need to have a clear understanding that the Holy Spirit's job is not to give you goosebumps. Right? It's not to give you, oh, I got a shiver. That's the Holy Spirit. That's not the Holy Spirit's job. It's it's, It's not to manufacture gold dust or angel feathers. Amen? It's not his job to bring glory to anybody but Christ. Jesus said in John 15, 26, but when the helper comes, the helper is the Holy Spirit. When the helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. The Holy Spirit will bear witness or he will point to Jesus always. He will point to Jesus always. We want the Spirit to be alive in our hearts, in our lives, and in our church because we want people to be directed to Jesus. Amen? So we are called to be filled with the Spirit for the glory of Christ. What else are we called to? I used this word a few weeks ago, and and it's worth remembering today. The word is koinonia. Say koinonia. It, It means Christian fellowship and communion. 
Acts 4, 32 through 35 says this. Now the full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul. And no one, and no one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own, but they had everything in common. And with great power, the apostles were giving testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them. Listen to this carefully. For as many as were owners of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold and laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The early church was united in Christ. They were bound together by the Spirit. And they gave freely to each other in love. This is not to be confused with communism. I had a friend in college that uh, got, got a little confused about this. The truth is this. Communism says what's yours is mine. I'll take it. Koinonia says what's mine is yours. Let me share it. Christian fellowship and communion. So we are called to be filled with the glory of Christ. We, we are called to have fellowship with believers and freely give to those in need. And lastly this morning, I want to remind you of the evangelist Philip. If you were here with us uh, the last few weeks, you're well aware of what this means for us today. In Acts chapter 8, verse 26, Philip receives instruction from the Lord on where to go and who to preach to. And it says this in verse 26, Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Rise and go towards the south to the road that goes from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert place. And he rose and went. And there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasure. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning, seated on his, in his chariot, and he was reading the prophet Isaiah. God sent Philip to preach to this Ethiopian. Long story short, the Ethiopian comes to Jesus. Philip baptizes him in this miraculous way. Philip is transported to another region to preach Christ, right? So the account in itself is a miracle. The account in itself is awesome. But what we miss so often and what we need to be reminded of again today is this. God didn't send Philip to preach to thousands. Peter preached to thousands. Thousands came to the Lord during Peter's sermons. Philip was sent to preach to one. Philip was sent to preach to one. And you say, why the one? Why would God just send to one? Why? Because God loves people. Amen? How, how many know God hates sin but loves people? The truth is this. Because God loves people, we should too. Amen? You may never have the opportunity to share Jesus with the crowd of thousands, but how many know you have an opportunity to share Jesus with at least one? A few weeks ago, we made it clear that in thinking about who in your life needs Christ, nobody can say nobody, right? What this means is this. We can't become lazy in representing and witnessing Christ to those around us. We can't. We can't just come to a church, sit in nice chairs, sing a nice song, and go back to living in the selfishness and ignoring the responsibility that we have to share Jesus. In fact, I'd even dare say it this way. If you don't have a desire to even reach one for Christ, you need to check to see if you really have him as Lord of your life. If you don't have a desire to reach one for Jesus, you might want to ask, is he really Lord of my life? And you say, some people may leave here today and entirely dismiss that challenge. Pastor David, how dare you question my relationship with God? You know how people get Bobby, right? Pastor David, how dare you? Everybody gets offended. A bunch of Karens. If somebody here is named Karen, uh, we're not referring to you. Maybe we are. I don't know. Maybe it's... Pastor David, how dare you question my relationship to God? Who do you think you are? The truth is that I'm nobody. 
but for the grace of God. Amen? Truth is, I'm nobody before the grace of God. And in case you're offended this morning, you should know that my words are just a paraphrasing of Jesus' words. Matthew 7, 16 says this. This, is gonna, this might hurt a little bit. You will recognize them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. Amen? How many know good trees bear good fruit? Just a few things we have that remind us of what we are called to do as the church. We are called to be filled with the Spirit. We are called to fellowship with believers and provide for the needy. And we are called to be witnesses of Christ to those around us. Amen? Amen. Stand with me this morning. I told you, it's not a long message. Somebody's going to lunch early. <laughs> Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we are so thankful to be able to come together to worship you. Lord, we rejoice in the dedication of babies to the Lord, and we are reminded of what it is you call us to as members of of the Ecclesia. Lord, continually fill us with your Spirit. Remind us of our commitment and guide us towards your glory. Lord, I pray this next week that you would speak to our hearts and that you would strengthen our souls. Lord, I pray over those who are here today. Lord, I pray that you would bless them. I pray that you would keep them. Lord, that you would cause your face to shine down upon them. And Lord, that you would give them rest. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Remember, men's group is going to be Thursday night at 630. Uh, don't forget that next week.